So we are about to get quite the rainstorm tonight, so they promise at least, and I wanted to get out here and fertilize my vegetables, which leads me to want to talk about fertilizer. It seems to be a very complicated topic, especially for beginner gardeners, and it leaves many people feeling very uncomfortable and unsure of where to start, what to do, and what they might be doing wrong. Your basics on fertilizer are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Those numbers represent the um, components of the majority of fertilizers that are out there, and then from there you'll have micronutrients such as um, magnesium or zinc or iron but your three main items are going to be the nitrogen, the uh, phosphorus, and potassium. So those are the three numbers we're going to be focusing on today. So what do you need? What does your garden need? I fertilize for what I am growing, not necessarily for the soil, mostly because my soil has been um, put in place by me and is in a very controlled environment. If I'm fertilizing in an in-ground bed, such as my front flower gardens, I would treat it a little bit differently. But for vegetable gardens in containers or vegetable gardens in raised beds, or even a vegetable garden in an in-ground situation, I'm going to be fertilizing for what the plants are. So for instance, leafy greens. You've got your lettuces, Swiss chard, kale, things that you are growing for the green. You're going to want to focus on higher nitrogen content. Nitrogen is what gives grass the greenery, trees the greenery. Nitrogen is green and it's going to promote a lot of leafy growth. Um, this can be a good thing for a general health um, perspective, but if you have too much leafy growth, you are not going to be getting good root development or good blooms, which then equal fruit. So if you are growing items such as tomatoes or peppers or eggplant or cucumbers or anything else really that is fruiting. So for those you want to be focused on your phosphorus levels because that is going to be encouraging really strong root development and also supporting the bloom development which should get you to have better fruit and better crops. The last one potassium is just a general all over health of the plant. All of them need it. Um, but it tends to get a little bit less focus on. So for my recommendation, typically I'm going to be suggesting that you focus on your phosphorus content for the majority of your vegetable garden because it's going to give your plants really good root development. It's going to help with transplant shock if your plants are new. It's going to encourage um, a, a, a deeper, stronger root, which will then later on help when you get into the really hot temperatures for drought, but then it will also help promote bloom and fruit. So for me, I use a very low fertilizer. It does not have high numbers of any sort because I don't want to risk burning my plants and I'm not interested in measuring anything out. And I also like to stick with a natural versus a synthetic fertilizer. So my preference, because it is very user-friendly, very safe to use, is the um, um, hen manure with the ch um, chicken poop pellets. And it is very low, 532. They have another version for tomatoes and peppers, which once again has a higher phosphorus number on there. Um, but I just use the general one and I sprinkle it on preferably before I water it or before I rain. It's low enough that you're not going to burn your crops, um, but it's going to give a well-balanced uh, mix for all of your vegetables. So you don't need to be picking and choosing one fertilizer for this item and another fertilizer for this item. It, it's gonna do the job. Now what about all those things online that you see about putting coffee grounds or eggshells or banana peel slurries or anything else in food related directly onto your plants? My recommendation on those is don't do it. I have tried the coffee grounds personally. They are very high in nitrogen, I believe, um, but the caffeine content can also cause some issues. So I actually had some stunted growth and some burned plants because of it. I find it's better into the compost, great addition there, not one for directly on the plants. Um, same goes with eggshells, they take so long to actually break down and become bioavailable as nutrients to your crops that it's just not worth putting into your um, vegetable area. If you want to as a form of slug protection against your plants, you can definitely try that. I haven't actually had any luck with them preventing slugs that way though, but you can always try it. Anything else, you're really going to be inviting pests into the picture. 
So it may eventually add some nutrients into your soil, but by the time it does that, odds are you will have attracted raccoons or squirrels or some other hungry little critter into where your plants are at the root and they will likely start digging and dig up your crops. So in my opinion, doing that form of fertilizing is not a good idea. Another really good idea, if you feel up for getting creative with it, are teas. So you could do compost tea, worm casting teas, weed teas, um, and you can cook up a concoction of those. I've done it with kelp before with good results. Um, there's a few different options that you can do that way. But in general, I consider myself a lazy gardener and I keep reverting back to the chicken poop pellets again and again. It's easier than sheep manure, cow manure to put around mature plants. Um, and those, once again, are quite a bit higher in nitrogen versus being an overall balance. Um, and I just keep coming back to it. So nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, nitrogen for the leafy greens, your phosphorus for your blooming and your rooting growth and low grade numbers so that you aren't burning anything and then an easy to apply method that is slow release and will break down with time and you are fertilizing your vegetables as for timing for fertilizing i do it monthly i don't fertilize until i typically see the blooms on my tomatoes by then they've normally been in the ground for two to four weeks and then from there i start on a monthly basis i'll just come in and sprinkle this around them and then reapply about a month later. Outside of that, I'm going to read my plants. So if I see my plant leaves are turning yellow or curling or doing any other weird thing, I will investigate specifically for that plant, especially if it's in its own container and will then fertilize or adapt accordingly. But typically I don't experience any issues with over or under fertilizing using this method. The one other thing to keep in mind if you are doing in-ground gardening is your soil type. If you have sandy soil versus clay soil, sandy soil you will probably want to fertilize more frequently as the nutrients will not stick around as easily. Clay soil will help to hold on to and retain those nutrients longer. Sandy soil, it's going to run and wash away. The other thing to keep in mind too is after heavy rainfalls and um, it possibly overwatering, you may have also flushed out some of the nutrients. So just something to keep in mind instead of sticking strictly to a four week schedule or monthly schedule is you may need to adapt it slightly. So I hope this made the whole process a little bit more simple for you and you will try it out yourself and give your plants a little bit of a boost to get them through the rest of the season. And let me know if you have great results or if you still have further questions and I'd be happy to answer them in the comments down below. If you are interested in more Canadian gardening and kid-friendly activities for outdoors and nature, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and we will see you in future videos. Thanks for watching.